Hello everyone, this is Rod from the Alchemist Den, our esoteric and hermetic study society. And to talk about planetary magic, I actually divided this presentation in two parts. Uh, this first part related to the introduction and theory, and then you will find separate the second part, which goes into the details of the ritual. Uh, there are many ways to approach uh, the subject about planetary magic. What I'm focusing for this presentation is the traditional writing of Tritemius, um, the art of drawing spirit into crystal, which was translated in, in Latin, and you can find it in the book The Magus, published, uh, written by uh, Francis Barrett. So we will focus, of course, in with, with Tritemius, but of course we will have here and there some connection with Kabbalah and uh, modern ceremonial magic. So let's start about, first of all, to ask what is planetary magic? Planetary magic essentially is the harnessing of specific energies, forces and vibrations attributed to a planet or a level of consciousness as we want to see it. And what is planetary magic used for? Well, uh, it can be for materialization of objectives, something really concrete, uh, can be for divination, gaining insight on specific topics, or it could be to attract or activate a specific force which corresponds to the planet into our lives. And finally, how is it performed? is uh, done by interacting with these energies, forces, or vibration through a ritual of evocation. First, let's start to look at the map of the cosmos according to the Chaldean way, which was actually drawn in this um, map by Ptolemy in the 150 and it's what's called the Ptolemaic system. And of course, it's a geocentric system and is the system where, where all the uh, modern astrology is based on, where we have, of course, the, the Earth in the center. And then we see the planet some kind of like, like spheres um, around Earth, where we find Moon, which is the, is, the, is the first one, and then Mercury and Venus and Sun and Mars and Jupiter in Saturn. And then finally, after the spheres of the planet, we have this upper level, this upper level that belongs to, depending on what theology or philosophy you may want to follow, but belongs to the uh, mind of God, mind of the universe, or the concept itself of creation, or where the Platonic ideas, the root of the idea, are just ideas. And this system is actually very much the same of what we see in the tree of life of the Kabbalah, which came much, much later in late 1600. But the structure is exactly the same. Like if we look at the from the bottom in the tree of life, where we see Malkut in the, the Sephira number 10, and we look up, you see exactly the same structure, the moon first. And then you have Mercury and Venus and then the Sun and so on and so forth until um, Saturn, which is the last planet, at least known at the Chaldean time. I just made it here is the same, exactly the same, but it's a little bit easier to, to read. And side by side with the Tree of Life, here I'd like to make a side note for who is actually into ceremonial magic or know about ceremonial magic knows that when we talk about or we want to work with planetary forces or zodiacal forces we use and we talk about hexagram and the hexagram actually comes from this diagram because if we connect the top three triad of the tree of life with the yesod with the moon sephiroth and the other planet that's what we get. We get an hexagram with the sun in, in the center. The hexagram, of course, is, is from the Greek word hexa, which is six. And you see it here very well. 
design with, with um, all the planets around and again who's into ceremonial magic um, is I think is very familiar with with this diagram and another way we can find uh, the planetary representation is on the heptagram and the heptagram again is from the Greek word hepta which is seven and is a star with with seven points um, but again the sequence and the representation of the planets is exactly the same as in the other representation so you have exactly the same sequence so Saturn Jupiter Mars Sun Venus Mercury Moon and Earth I mean this is whichever you want to look at this is just for and then we go back a little bit to talk about planetary magic in terms of we discussed it about bringing an idea something that is not concrete we bring this idea into our material world we make it materialize into our material world and how does this happen so basically let's consider the the idea itself which is much above all the spheres and as we said before him is something uh, as Plato's may talk about the idea it may be something in the mind of God in the mind of creation in the mind of the universe so this is really just a concept an idea once this idea or concept start to come down and go through the spheres of the planet so I go through Saturn Jupiter Mars Sun Venus Mercury Moon and finally it comes to our uh, level of, of earth this thing would have had taken some influence and some energies from all the spheres of the planet that he went through so when it comes down to the earth level or the Malkut level is like a combination of all these these energies and finally gives birth to something material something that we can actually something that we can actually see with our five five senses the, we saw the representation on the on the Ptolemaic uh, diagram but if we look at exactly the same concept in the tree of life it would exactly go like that with the, just the famous thunder lightning from Saturn to Earth Now let's talk a little bit more about the planets we saw the idea or the concept going through these, these spheres and the first one that we meet is, is Saturn Saturn is usually considered a scary planet because it's associated with death it's associated with, with coldness and it's associated with time but the reason why Saturn is associated with, with death is because Saturn is the one that gives this idea this concept an expiry date if an idea or concept doesn't have an expiry date it would not be able to move and have first step toward a concrete materialization because everything that exists in our world everything that exists in Malkut must have an expiry date so actually Saturn is sets this motion in place by defining the expiry date or in case of humans is we're talking about of course the death of of humans next it would be the sphere of Jupiter which gives it the potential for growth and consistency then we move to Mars which is a fighting planet but also what gives the boundaries and survival tool to this idea too keep going the Sun will give and control the relation with the environment and its sustainability then we move to Venus Venus is in charge of the shape of these things when it will be material and of course it gives the potential for reproduction and then we have Mercury in charge of the intellectual part um, which gives the potential for cognitive reasoning and, and intellectual growth and finally we have the last the last sphere which is the, the sphere of the moon 
and the moon is the one that gives potential for emotions feeling and is also the one opening the final gate from the upper spheres to the material world now when we talk about planets we talk about jupiter saturn itself but when we look about when you look inside the planet um what we see is a fourfold world the fourfold world of kabbalah which is represented in every single planetary entity so each planet would have is let's call it the ceo and it would have a director that responds to the ceo and would have a manager that responds to the director and finally we'd have an employee that responds to the manager the way we call it is the god name the archangel the intelligence and the spirit now this four folded um, structure is also uh, very important for our planetary work because the more we need something concrete the more we need to go down in the um, in the structure so meaning if we want to work with something very concrete we need to work with the spirit because the spirit is actually the muscle of the planet and is the one that is closer to our world the more we move, we move up to an intelligence archangel or god name we move far away from our material world so we move more toward the god's head so things get a little bit more difficult if we want to get something concrete but nevertheless let's take our jupiter as, as an example the god name would be l the archangel is Sachiel. intelligence is Yophiel, and spirit is ismael so each and every single planet would have this structure would have his own god name would have his own archangel in charge of it would have his own intelligence and would have his own spirit if you remember at the beginning we were asking what is planetary magic used for so we, when we say materialization of objective and as i just said the spirit is actually this the muscle is the closest to our material world so in case of number one in case of materialization of objective is the spirit that we want to work with in case of more intellectual more divinatory more higher level kind of insight that we may want then is the intelligence that we may need to um, work with to attract or activate a specific force in our life well this is very generic so depending on what is exactly the purpose we may want to choose to work with the spirit the intelligence or of course both of them. next how do we actually reach out to these energies vibration entities that are within the planetary sphere and and we have three important things to keep in mind one is the map it's like a geographical map to identify these these energies next is the time and third uh, are the correspondences Let, let's see one by one so starting from the map actually called in in technical terms are called planetary square or kamiya and this kamiya pretty much comes out in all the many of the uh, renaissance grimoires and are over and over rewritten here and there um, so in this presentation i'm using um, agrippa's the occulta philosophia the three book of occult philosophy which is one of the first texts where these kamiya are explained and um, in fact in chapter 22 of the second book if i'm not wrong um it starts the, the chapter itself is on the tables of the planets their virtues forms and what divine names intelligences and spirit are set over them and as agrippa writes in in that chapter it is affirmed by magician that there are certain tables of numbers distributed to the seven planets which they call the sacred tables of the planet endowed with many and very great virtues of heaven so basically these these tables are somehow representing the planet itself 
and they look like this is an excerpt from the again from the book you will see two set of cameos uh, one is with the three columns and three rows and, and the next one is four columns and four rows these numbers are very important and I'm highlighting the four rows four columns cameo which is as we follow the example of Jupiter this is the cameo of Jupiter and the number four, why does it have four columns, four rows? Because if we go back to our Ptolemaic map, Jupiter is in position number four. So one, two, three, and four. So the one right above, which is the cameo of Saturn, you see Saturn is position number three. So you see it has three rows and three columns. So each planet will have this cameo according to their position in the Ptolemaic representation. On the top, it would have a sigil. It would have a sigil for the intelligence and it would have a sigil for the spirit. Now I'm taking the Jupiter cameo here in an easier way to, to see it and to read it. Now we see the Jupiter come here with the intelligence, planetary seal, and spirit glyphs or, or, or sigil right here. And the come here, um, you see that one is written, is filled with um, Hebrew letters, and the other one is filled with numbers. Uh, the reason is because, you know, Hebrew, uh, Latin, Greek. These languages, Phoenicians, had correspondences between letters and numbers. In Hebrew, in Hebrew this is called gematria or gematria. But the most important point is that each letter corresponds to a number. So we can actually have the kamiya either way. Uh, we can use the letters, we can fill it with letters, or we can fill it with number. In this example, we have both. And... Uh, now let's go a little bit deeper on how the sigil of the intelligence seal and spirit are coming out from this this cameo taking our jupiter, jupiter example the intelligence is your heel and if we write in hebrew of course it will be written from right to left but not only that O is not, vowel is not, is not in the Hebrew alphabet, so it would be H, and so it would be something like if we, are, if we have to read it exactly. And then we look at our um, correspondences. So here we have the 22 letters of the uh, Hebrew alphabet and the corresponding numbers. And then we look at the first one, which is Yod is the first letter representing the Y of Yofihel, so it's called Yod, and correspond to the number 10. Next is the H of H, and is corresponding to the number 5. So now we have the 10 and the 5, and then we start on the Kamiya with the number 10, and we move to, we connect the number 5. Next, we have the F, the letter F, which is corresponding to number 80. We, we don't have an 80 in the cameo of Jupiter, but we can reduce this 80 to the number 8. And so we connect the 5 to the 8. Finally, we have Aleph, which is a mute, is a mute sound, uh, which is 1. And... Um, which is one and then again back to the yod which is 10 so 10 plus 1 it would be 11 and we go back to 11. finally the l very famous l as most of the archangels and angels name are uh, have the, this this um, sound at the end and correspond to the number 30. so from 11 we go again we don't have the 30 so we reduce it to 3. And as you see, what has been drawn on the on the Kamiya is uh, pretty much the same as you see below in um, the sigil of Yofiel. So this is how basically the sigil uh, of the intelligence planet and spirits are written 
over the Kamiya. Once you know this system, um, you can basically draw it yourself, or you can even put your own name on the Kamiya of the of the planet. And this would be your first task to move toward the ritual, the actual practice of planetary magic. Your first task would actually be to prepare your own planetary square. So depending on the planet that you want to work with, the intelligence or spirit. Or, or planet itself that you want to work with, um, the first task would be to draw your own Kamiya. Draw the Kamiya of the planet and put the sigil of the spirit, intelligence, or planet over it. Next, we say after the map, the second most important thing to reach out to these energies is, is the time. Why the time? Because the time is well. The week it goes by. It goes is is very simple because we know Sunday is the day of the sun, Monday is the day of the moon, Tuesday is the day of Mars, Wednesday Mercury, Thursday Jupiter, Friday Venus, and Saturday is Saturn. And this is pretty much straightforward. Um, we have to dig a little bit deeper, and in each of these. Uh, planetary day, um, we have the planetary hours, which means that every hour belonging to uh, the, the day is assigned to a planet. And usually it starts from the very first hour of sunrise. For instance, the first hour of sunrise on Sunday is the hour of the sun. And again, following the same Chaldean or Ptolemaic sequence we go to the next hour in seven by seven until we reach the last hour of the night of sunday which is the hour of mercury to start again with the very first new hour of sunrise on monday which is the hour of the moon For this, I, I, I strongly suggest eventually to download. There is thousands of apps for the phones, and there is um, there is a very good um, software for for the PC, which is called Chrono, Chronos XP, C H R O N O S XP dot com. You can download the application. I, although you may understand, and there, there may be very similar correspondences and easy to to track which hours is which planet. I suggest to use the, the application because they change according to um, season, um, um, summer, winter. So there is always some, a little bit of difference in minutes and using an application or using a program is the fastest way to know when is the a certain planetary hours within a certain planetary day. Going back to our example, if we want to work with Jupiter, of course, we would choose Thursday, because that's the day of Jupiter. And in Jupiter day, the Jupiter, the hour of Jupiter will be repeated three times. So we will have the first hour of Jupiter, which is always on the sunrise, plus seven, because we will have to do the circle. The second time the hour of Jupiter will come back is around uh, noon time. And then the last, the third and the last time that the hour of Jupiter will, will return on the same day is around 7, 8 p.m. So we will have to choose Thursday on each or, or one of the three hours of Jupiter if we want to work with Jupiter. So the day of the planet and the hour of the planet. This is a side note from the heptameron of, of Peter de Bano, which is a very nice suggestion. That's why I put it here, because personally speaking, I find it very important. Um, let the moon be increasing and equal, if possible. Meaning that the, beside the day and the time, I know it's getting complicated, but um, is much easier if you choose a time of uh, waxing moon and is an uh, even number of waxes on the second, fourth, sixth, or eighth day.
last <coughs> are the correspondences. The correspondences are well for the first hermetic principle of Hermes Rismagisis states as above, so below. The concept is that whatever is above us has a resonance, has a correspondence on what is below in our world. So it's exactly like um, this is a very cute uh, gif that is, is, is showing uh, when something resonates on, on the same frequency, any other object that is on the same frequency will start to, to resonate with it. And this is what we want to do when we do our ritual with the planet. We want to make our um, temple, our, our ritual, our environment resonate as much as possible with the energies or the vibration of the planet. Each planet, again, we take Jupiter for, for easy example, each planet have correspondences in metal, in stones, in colors, in sands, in, in animals, in parts of the body, um, you call it. Um, if you want a full uh, list of correspondences, I strongly suggest the website alchemy-works.com. For each planet, you'll find a full list of correspondences. For our ritual, we may need a little bit less than that. But nevertheless, we, we look at Jupiter, so corresponding you know, resonates with the metal tin, with the amethyst and lapis lazuli stones. It resonates with the color violet and blue and resonates with scents of sandalwood, sage, nutmeg. And you can add on to it music, whatever is Jupiterian or whatever is resonates with Jupiter, you can add it on. The most important thing that we will consider for our ritual is the colors, because we may want to use a color, a candle that has the color of the planet. So in this case, we would choose either violet or blue. And we want to choose a scent of incense that correspond to the planetary um, scent. So in this case, we would choose either sandalwood, sage, or nutmeg. The purpose, again, is to make or to fill your senses with planetary correspondences in order to tune in with the planet. Okay, so before uh, moving to the part two of this uh, presentation, so moving to the ritual, I thought it would be nice to put a small recap. This is coming from the Greater Key of Solomon, which is a very famous grimoire. And it sums up a little bit um, what, which planet is good for what, for which magic. And of course, this is written a few hundred years ago, so our needs or our, our ideas may be a little bit different, but I think we can find uh, and it gives some, some instructions and guidelines by planets. So starting, for instance, from uh, Saturn, that you can perform experiments to cause good or ill, Ill success, to, success to business, possession, goods, seeds, fruit, and similar things, in order to acquire learning, to bring destruction and give death. Well, yeah. And so hatred and uh, discord. No, not all like that. But of course, we, we can go through this. This is just a, a guideline. Um, okay, so this is this is it for the first part of the presentation. Thank you very much for being and for staying all the way to here. And uh, please um, have a look at the next one, which is we go into the details of the ritual. Thank you very much. Bye.